Thank you for joining us. I've got Jason with me today, and we're going to be talking about the idea of an innovation journey within an organization. And Jason is really focused on the insurance industry, but we were talking through this idea before, and I think it's incredibly valuable information for any organization, regardless of the, the specific industry that you're in. Um, but before we get going on the conversation of what that journey looks like, Jason, can you give everybody a quick introduction? Yeah, happy to. And first off, Emma, let me say thank you very much for the introduction. I know we have talked about scheduling one of these uh, for quite some time, so uh, very much happy to be part of the conversation. Uh, so for those that don't meet Jason Gross, I'm currently uh, Vice President and Head of Platform for Manchester Story uh, based in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Manchester Story is an early stage lead investor uh, in insure tech companies uh, and adjacent industries, including fintech and health tech. I've been around for about four years. My background though, for the last 20 years has been in the property casualty insurance space, uh, both in information technology, but more specifically the last, I don't know, seven, eight years uh, leading corporate strategy and innovation efforts for two of the top carriers uh, based here in Des Moines. And so happy to be uh, talking about the journey that not only those organizations have taken, but any organization might take when considering innovation and adopting new technologies. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the introduction. And to get us started again, we're going to kind of talk through what this journey looks like. Um, so as a company is kind of taking that first step into, we know we need to change, we know we need to transform. What does that first step typically look like? Yeah, and I like to call it Innovation 1.0. Uh, so Innovation 1.0 to me, I call it chasing the shiny objects. And that might actually sound like a bad thing or a negative connotation that you're out there just chasing all the, the shiny objects. But I really think it's an important step to understand what are the new possibilities? What are the technologies? What are the trends that are impacting you know, us, our customers, our distribution? How do we go to market? There is just so many new technologies uh, impacting all of us or about to impact us from big data and artificial intelligence and virtual reality and blockchain. I mean, we can go on and on and on. You know, once upon a time, any one or two of those technologies could have a really big impact on our industry or really any industry. But the fact is there are 12, 15, even 20 technologies on the radar screen right now. And so chasing the shiny objects also means going out there and learning and getting inspired about what others are doing, not just in our industry, but in other industries as well, uh, so that we can learn from them and start to understand what are the opportunities uh, for each and every one of us. Uh, one quick aside, you know, I've, I've been part of this debate for some time about innovation for innovation's sake. And we'll get to the, the later stages next in terms of how do we get return on our innovation efforts, but don't discount the importance of doing some innovation work for the sake of innovation that really kind of helps inspire and educate you and your organization about the possible. So once we've laid that foundation, and I agree, I don't think it's a bad thing to chase the shiny objects. I think you have to go through that. And sometimes I call it the art of possible and really yeah. understanding what's out there. And to your point, you, you have to do that before you get to the next stage of innovation. So can you share what, once we've, built that foundation, we understand what's going on, what's the next step typically look like? That's great, Emma. And I think it's important to understand that while that can be fun, chasing all the shiny objects, uh, if you're just sitting there and spinning your wheels and not doing anything else with it, uh, then you're never going to get very far. Uh, and it's very easy to kind of get stuck in that, that shiny object phase. So it's really important for organizations to find that transition to innovation 2.0. And I like to call that the processization of innovation, because when we're starting off, we don't have repeatable processes. You know, I remember the first time I was working with a carrier and we were looking to do a proof of concept or a pilot with a startup company. And it really felt like we were reinventing the wheel. We didn't know who to go to for, for what. So the processization of innovation means that you start to have a priority list understanding what problems are you trying to solve? What opportunities are you trying to pursue for your company or for the marketplace? And then you actually have a structure by which you will go out and evaluate what are the options, what works for you or for your customers and your technology platform, and what are the, that you're really trying to accomplish with those innovation efforts uh, and investments. 
So starting to build a process around even thinking about uh, how are we going to uh, pursue innovation and new technologies. Well, going back to what you said, really finding the purpose behind bringing in innovation and technology rather than doing it just for the sake of transformation because we've been told that we have to. Um, so one of the biggest things that everybody hears about innovation or transformation is that there is this wonderful return on your investment at the end. So can we talk a little bit about how we actually get to the point where we start to recognize that return on investment? Yeah, and what a great tee up, uh, Emma, because I call Innovation 3.0 the path to ROI, the path to return on investment or alternatively return on innovation. Uh, because while chasing the shiny objects is fun and building out those processes is fun, at some point we need to be able to show a, a return on those investments and those efforts. But here's the challenge. Too often uh, we start off these innovation efforts or adopting a new technology with great fanfare and maybe even our, our senior executives get really excited and they think we're going to flip this switch and all of a sudden we're going to see, you know, new business come flooding in the door or savings on our expense line, whatever the case might be. But the, the reality is even with new technologies, whether it's an automation or uh, you know, leveraging a, a new go-to-market strategy, it still takes time for those solutions, those technologies to build in that return. And so once we kind of build out that process, it's really important to think through how are we going to measure the success of this tool, this integration, this solution? And how are we going to not only identify what does success look like, but what is that process by which we are going to measure it? Because it's also important to understand that there is a lag between when we turn things on and when we get that return. And that's why I call it the path to ROI, not achieving ROI, because we have to have enough things in the pipeline, enough solutions, enough technologies, enough opportunities that we've identified we want to pursue in order to really see that ROI, the true return on investment or return on innovation uh, in the end. All right. And so when we get to this point where we've started to, to head down that path, because I agree, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, and we start to make our way towards this final stage of innovation. What does that look like? And what are the considerations that we kind of need to, to keep in mind as we head into the future and beyond? Yeah, uh, thanks, Emma. And I really think that that next stage, that innovation 4.0 uh, is more around the path to integration or the path to being able to, to plug and play, uh, the path to agility, perhaps. Because in the future, you know, especially as we work with new technologies and new solutions, we need to be able to plug and play. Uh, we need to be able to pivot more frequently. And so, so many organizations, especially in the insurance industry, but I think it, it, it spans industries as well, really struggle with architecture that is not set up to truly leverage uh, APIs and connectivity to make those types of quick pivots. So that next horizon, uh, for all of us in organizations is to not only think about how are we structuring and architecting uh, our, our back office to be able to leverage those solutions, but actually I think it gets a little bit deeper as well. Because once we've gone through the chasing the shiny objects and the processization and, and having a path to get that return, that is truly only possible if we also bring our organization along on that journey as well. So that, that furthest horizon for me is really when we stop thinking about innovation as just the new buzzword, the new effort du jour, and really start to integrate it into how we think and how we act as organizations and really ingrain it at that, that core level um, uh, going forward. Great. And I agree. It can't just be a moment in time. The whole thought process is to set your organization up for the future of work. And that doesn't just stop with like a, a static point of like, whew, good news, we're transformed. We can stop now. <laughs> but it's so often that happens, right? And you know, I think one of the, the truths of innovation is that it is cyclical. When you look at the, the history even of insurance, and, and you can probably equate this to other industries as well, 
there are big technological, you know, evolutions that we take, you know, every few decades. Think back to when we started using the first computers as opposed to doing everything on typewriters uh, to when we started storing everything, you know, digitally versus keeping paper copies of everything. It, it's kind of that, that next cycle. So oftentimes these efficiencies that we try to get by leveraging new technologies are the same problems we have solved before. We have the, the opportunity to solve again with even better, more efficient, potentially less expensive, you know, technologies. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for sitting down and having the conversation. And I want to encourage everybody who's watching to make sure that you're following Jason on LinkedIn. He's got his Thinking Thursday series and all sorts of other great content that he's sharing there. Um, but thank you again so much for joining me and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, everyone. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.